I never had an issue with the fact that I had somebody else's lungs in my body. My name is Brenda Chambers Ivy. I'm 54 years old. I have cystic fibrosis and I was diagnosed at three months old. I had pneumonia and I had a double lung transplant 15 years ago at the age of 38 years old. I was listed for a lung transplant. Uh, I was listed the day that I turned 36, actually. I was on the wait list for exactly one week shy of three years. And I received my transplant on July 28th, 2003. So it was a pretty long wait. Up until that point, I had been on oxygen and, and my health was declining over a period of time. And people used to laugh at me because I was, uh, they always used to tease me about how much I would do anyways. Um, I ran a day care up actually up until I was uh, listed for transplant. Um, so I was like to be busy with kids and doing things and even like people in the neighborhood would joke because I would go out with my oxygen pack slung over my shoulder and I would be outside shoveling snow in the driveway <laughs> and things like that. I just, I always needed to keep busy and do the best that I could physically. Um, so when it got to the point where I was just before transplant, I had slowed down quite a bit. Um, it, was re it was hard even for personal care, like to have a shower. Uh, having a bath was pretty much, I couldn't because the water pressure on my lungs was just too much. I couldn't breathe properly. So it had to be showers and even having a shower was exhausting sometimes. Um, personal care, doing anything around the house was was pretty tough at that point so I had home care come in I had you know um, different things like that just to help out even because my husband was working full-time he couldn't do anything and keep in mind uh, you know I was 38 years old at that time so you think about most 38 year olds that's not what they're doing with their life they're out there they've had their families they're they've got their kids they're working full-time they're traveling they're doing all sorts of things well, at that point in my life, I certainly couldn't. So when I got the news, uh, when I got the call for transplant, it was uh, July 20, would have been July 27th. Um, I got the call at about 11.30 at night. We had just gone to bed and got the phone call and it was the nurse clinician. Her name is Ann Zabo and she was such a special person in my life. And she said, okay, we have the perfect pair of lungs for you. So I said, okay. So I promptly gave the phone to my husband and I went to the bathroom and I puked. <laughs> Nerves or whatever it was. Um, took my inhaled treatment that I had to take just to help me breathe. And then we got in the car and they said, don't break any land speed records. They said, just make sure you get to the hospital as soon as possible. So we piled into the car. We had a back um, bag packed and ready to go because that's what you have to be ready to go at a moment's notice. And we drove up to the Health Sciences Center in Winnipeg and then we, we had a couple of my girlfriends came behind a couple hours afterwards and they were at the hospital waiting uh, with us in the room while I was getting ready for the transplant. Uh, we had friends in Winnipeg that also came up to the hospital. Um, interesting story, one of the friends that, was, um, that came to support my husband, he had, um, he had just gone to bed probably around the same time that we received the call but he couldn't sleep, so he stayed up and he watched TV and he was flipping through the channels and he said he came across a channel that was doing a doc documentary on lung transplants. So he sat up and he watched a lung transplant and he says right after the documentary was over, he, my husband called him and said, okay, Brenda's here, she's getting her transplant. So he came up to the hospital right away to support my husband and that was pretty special. Surgery actually went really quickly because the normal for lung transplant surgery can any be anywhere from 8 to 12 hours. It depends on if they run into any complications or anything of that sort. My transplant took six and a half hours. They said it went incredibly well. Um, some people have to be put on bypass when they're um, when they have a major operation like that. I didn't have to be put on bypass. You know, everything went exceedingly well. Then I went to the ICU right after that. Um, a few interesting things happened in the ICU from what I understand. 
there was a major thunderstorm that night. Uh, the power went out. They were worried about the machines. They were keeping me going at that point and uh, a few little hiccups, but things were good. Within, uh, within, I think it was three or four days after the transplant, they had me up and walking around the ward um, to the best of my ability. Um, within two and a half weeks after transplant, I was released from the hospital, but still had to stay in Winnipeg because there's lots of testing and things that you have to do afterwards. Um, still weak, still couldn't do it just because of the incision and, and everything like that. Um, but slowly things came back and I was able to start doing the things that I wanted to do. Um, there was some trial and error involved. There were times where I did too much and paid for it. But um, within probably not too long a period, I was able to do, you know, normal everyday things. Um, just like, you know, maybe some light house cleaning and getting back into things. I went from not being able to breathe, not being able to care for myself, not being able to take care of my husband. Um, being, I was a happy person and I was happy, I mean, I had a good existence, don't get me wrong, but I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do. After the transplant and the recovery, uh, which took about a year, um, I was able to get back to doing the things that I wanted to do and then some. It was like my husband described it as my zero to 60 phase. <laughs> I went from zero to 60 in like three seconds. It was because you get this feeling that you want to make up for lost time. You want to do all the things that you couldn't do in that time frame because you were so sick that you really couldn't do anything. So I went a little squirrely for a while probably for the first year, um, well, after the recovery, so about the second year or so, I went a little bit nutty, um, did a little too much, um, and kind of, it took me probably longer than I would have liked to kind of settle down and say, okay, you got to get your priorities straight. You got to figure out what's going on with you because it, it's like you've got so much coming at you and it's, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this. Yeah, I can do that. Let's go do this. And not everybody can do that. You can't keep up that pace and other things falter because of it. So um, all in all, it was a fantastic experience, but it's one that I would caution people, once you've had your transplant and you're feeling wonderful again and you wanna go live life and you just remember that you have time now to do all the things that you wanna do. I mean, go out and live your life. Go do those fantastic things, but don't let other things slide because of it. I often wonder, because I know people that have had transplants and have passed on. I know people that have never even got to the point where they were fortunate enough to receive a transplant. I do think, um, why am I still here? What, why did this person not make it and I did? Why has this person had so many complications and I haven't? What, what makes, makes our situation so different? And I don't think there's really, really any one right answer for that. I mean, is it because I live where I live? Is it because of the tremendous support I have from my husband and my friends? Um, is it something in my biology that makes me different I don't know all I know is that I am here and that I want to try to make a difference as far as my community um, people with cystic fibrosis you know I I do a lot of work with cystic fibrosis Canada um, I am on the cystic fibrosis adult advisory committee where we deal with issues that uh, directly related to cystic fibrosis adults now remember, um, because cystic fibrosis was considered a children's disease for many years, um, now we're looking at 50% of the population is 18 years and over. Also for Cystic Fibrosis Canada, there's a group of us adults that do a blog um, every month. So it's on the Cystic Fibrosis Canada website. And I think it's good for people with cystic fibrosis 
and people in the general population to read that might give them some insight about cystic fibrosis and what people go through. Cystic fibrosis has been an inseparable part of my life, obviously. Um, it's made me who I am today. It's given me opportunities I never would have had otherwise. I've been able to travel um, for to do presentations for cystic fibrosis. I've been able to to um, inter go to different conferences in different areas of the world because of cystic fibrosis. I've been able to help other people with cystic fibrosis. I've won awards um, for some of the work that I've done for cystic fibrosis. So. As horrible as cystic fibrosis is, it's been pretty good to me. I wouldn't have had the opportunities that I've had and I wouldn't have the life I have if I didn't have cystic fibrosis. So in some strange way, I guess I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm.